Thanks, Mr. Button. Thank you, Madam. Uh, there's, there's lots I'd like to say, but of course we're limited on time, so I'll limit it to one particular thing. First of all, I'd say that the British government's offer is very generous and reasonable, and how else could it be done except on an individual basis? Um, we don't have to carry identity cards in the UK. We're not a police state, uh, but you may be required to prove who you are in particular circumstances. In countries in Europe, many countries, you are required to carry an identity card at all times. Mm -hmm. But the issue I'd like to talk about is reciprocity and fairness, because Mr. Verhofstadt has talked about this in his paper, and this is about regarding the rights of citizens. Now, there is a massive imbalance between the number of UK citizens living in the EU, which is about 1.2 million, and 3.2 million U EU citizens living in the UK. And Mr. Verhofstadt, for example, talks about uh, the right to loss of export of benefits. And we touch on this issue that I've raised here before, which is vested rights, which is a time bomb under uh, Brexit waiting to go off. And Mr. Verhofstadt talks, for example, about the, uh, the right for, to, for children not yet born uh, in 2019 when we leave to have the right to have ben uh, benefits exported abroad. Now, very quickly to make my point, take Poland as one example. There are 883,000 Poles, roughly, living in the UK, while 35,000 UK citizens live in Poland. Now, my question about reciprocity and fairness is that all of those people who are there, quite rightly already established, will have the right to benefits, housing, national health service, and all the rights and privileges of a British citizen. There is no reciprocity because a British citizen in, the, in uh, Poland and other Eastern European countries won't have rights to housing and benefits and a national health service because they don't exist in the way that they exist in the UK. So how is it fair to expect hard-working British taxpayers to pay the benefits of people who may not even yet be born uh, when they cannot get the same entitlement in the EU because they don't exist? I represent London. I live in one of the most deprived boroughs in the UK, the London Borough of Newham. And why should I tell my constituents that they have to pay tax ad infinitum to pay for people who may not even li live in the UK, why they have no similar entitlement should they choose to go and live in the EU. And then, um, finally, uh, when we talk about reciprocity, but I can only echo what already has been said uh, by our chair, that's not a question of numbers. Say, oh, there are three million and, uh, and there are only one million? Uh, well, I could say, yeah, but does the 3 million represent only 0.6% of the total European population and the 1 million of British coming to the continent represent nearly 2% uh, nearly of the total British population? What is this for? Then? We are talking about citizens. We are talking about individuals. And every individual, even when it should be only one individual, only one family, that needs to be our concern. That's not a question of numbers. It's a question of human beings and that you don't express in numbers, I think. But, okay. Well, that's, uh, reciprocity is reciprocity in rights. And that is not a question of saying, oh, there are only one million concerns there and three million concerns there. We are talking about human beings and then you don't do that, in my opinion. As, that's my opinion uh, and, and my feeling in, in question of saying, yeah, but there are so many uh, uh, Europeans. Uh, and think a little bit also what... what UK nationals living on the continent bring also something to Europe as EU citizens living in Britain have also contribute uh, to the wealth and the economy uh, of Britain. Let's see it in a positive way and not as a burden. Uh, people are not a burden. Uh, people are, are made concern of, uh, of uh, the action that we are taking. Thank you. Uh, Thank you very much.